Okay, everybody, I think it's time to get started. Um, thank you for joining us today uh, for this presentation of the five pillars of ortho aligners with Dr. Jeffrey Gross. My name is BJ Kowalski. I'm the president of Rowe Dental Laboratory, and I'm, I'm really excited to have you listen to this presentation. Um, Dr. Gross uh, is a DDS, FAGD, is a graduate of Case Western University. He graduated at the early in the top of his class in an accelerated dental program. He also completed an externship in oral implant surgery at the Midwest Implant Institute, Case Western Reserve University. After achieving over 300 hours of surgical training and graduating, he opened his first practice in Eastlake, Ohio, and now possesses more than 40 years of experience in practicing general cosmetic, along with over 20 years of dental implant experience. Dr. Gross is really passionate about learning. We have uh, conduct courses here at the lab with him, so we know how, how great a job he does. I think you're really gonna enjoy his, his lecture today. Um, he keeps up with the latest developments in modern dentistry and passing along with other to passing this his his knowledge along to other dentists is his passion. He teaches part time at the graduate periodontal program at Case Western Reserve School of Dental Medicine, along with lecturing on implant dentistry and providing in office mentoring to doctors right there in his office uh, on a variety of subjects, including implants. Dr. Gross has been a prescriber and avid user and advocate of ortho aligners for over 17 years. When he began the process, it was an analog workup with a series of wax ups and suck downs, and he quickly transitioned over to the digital workflow with Invisalign and never looked back. To date, he has completed over 500 cases. Dr. Gross will present how to successfully incorporate ortho aligners into your dental practice, discussing appropriate patient identification, available patient treatment options, and how to fully integrate the practice workflow. He'll walk through the five pillars of ortho aligner success, sharing his decades of experience in the area. Dr. Gross is an Invisalign provider and a Clearline provider, and is, a, is the owner of Healthy Smiles Dental Center in East Lake, Ohio. Clearline is an ortho uh, aligner pro uh, process that we do here at Rowe Dental Laboratory. It's uh, FDA approved, um, has 510K and has MSSAP certified process. It's a highly uh, technologically advanced aligner process, and it's been doing a great job for our clients. Um, it can tend to um, save a significant cost and turn around and decrease the turnaround time. And, and Dr. Gross has been a, an advocate of that. Uh, so without any further questions, um, Dr. Gross will take over the presentation. And again, thank you for, uh, for joining us. Thank you, BJ. That was very kind of you. I appreciate those words. And let's get right into our presentation today. And the subject is bringing ortho, orthodontics into the general practice. And this is something I've been a advocate of for many, many years, way back when, going back now, I was involved with molar uprighting. Uh, at that time, prior to implant dentistry, we were doing a lot of bridge work. And so often we would suggest and recommend to a patient that they need a bridge, for example, from 29 to 31, but 31, 31 for many years is tilted forward. So immediately I was involved with molar uprighting, with springs, with wires, getting that tooth into position to provide a better service to my patients. Fast forward a number of years down the line, we started looking at other ways of moving teeth because in a general dentist's office, many times we are not efficient at bringing conventional braces into the practice. We're not geared for it, we're not set up for it. There's a lot of time involved with it. And I found that the shift from doing conventional metal braces, wires, clear brackets or metal brackets is really irrelevant to an aligner type of orthodontic practice was a big boon for my practice. One second. and my screen is stuck. There we go. Okay, perfect. So let me tell you who I am. I am a general dentist, as BJ had mentioned. Um, and this is my office that we just moved into about 12 years ago. I'm a general practitioner who does all phases of dentistry. And I'm gonna emphasize all phases of dentistry because it's crucial that to be successful in today's marketplace, you can't simply be doing two or three procedures. You have to be offering a variety of procedures in your office. Now, this is contrary to what we teach down at the university. The university, um, every specialty, every subspecialty has cases referred to them. 
but what I found over the years is that patients, if they can, prefer to stay in one office. Now, this doesn't mean that you are do, doing impactions all day long or, or number 15, number two, molar root canals, if you are not comfortable with them. Every specialty, we're trained to do every specialty in our education, and we should dabble in those specialties to whatever level we're feeling comfortable. So we're gonna talk about today how to integrate orthodontics into your practice. You're not doing a, a, a mandibular repositioning adjustment after a surgery. You are doing orthodontics that is appealing to you, that is easy to accomplish, and is something the patients will definitely delve into. Way back when, when I first started implementing orthodontics into, into my practice, many times the answer was, well, we need to veneer these teeth or we need to crown these teeth because they're crooked. And that was the instant orthodontics. We were done in a couple of visits. Uh, if, the patient, if the patient had multiple restorations on the teeth, it may have been a no brainer because they needed crowns or veneers on those teeth otherwise. But if they didn't, it was kind of a hard sell. A uh, hard sell, first of all, in my own mind and a hard sell to the patient. Now it's not much different than a plastic surgeon doing a nose job on a patient they go ahead and they do a major surgery to give a cosmetic result. We in dentistry have a tendency to think that we have to be all the time as minimally invasive as possible. And that's appropriate the majority of time, but there's some times that it's not appropriate. And so over the years, if we had a crowded case or we had a diastema closure and we couldn't do it with bonding or we couldn't do it with orthodontics for whatever reason, the patient didn't want to see anybody else. You weren't comfortable with it. So we made crowns that were larger. We made veneers that were larger. Fast forward to where we're at today. Now doing orthodontics is much more successful and much more amenable to a general practitioner. So I'm just like you guys. We do all modalities in my office and whether we're talking about orthodontics, whether we're talking about sleep apnea, whether we're talking about implant placement, whether we're talking about endodontics, it's really irrelevant. To some degree, you should be able to do some of these procedures. Now, when you do these procedures, you're always held accountable, such as, as if a specialist was doing that. So that's something to be aware of. Um, you can't do in an inadequate form of orthodontics or endodontics or implant surgery. You have to be able to stand up there with a specialist as they are doing the procedures because unfortunately, if something would happen, that would be your peer review. So whatever you learn to do, you need to learn to do well and you need to learn to develop the, these skills so you can be comfortable for yourself and for your practice and for your patients, obviously. So my journey, I first started out doing general dentistry, Crown and Bridge. At that time, we were doing a lot of operative dentistry and we're going back now 40 years. And I developed and started to develop patient retention with my practice. I wanted to make sure the patients would stay with me. And the way to stay with me was for me to do multiple types of procedures. Often I would refer a patient out for an endodontic procedure to do a molar. I saw them months later and they had a horrible toothache. And I said, what happened? Well, I never went. I didn't want to see anybody else but you. This is so crucial to a general practitioner. The patients develop a relationship with you over the weeks, months, and years. The specialist sees them, except maybe for an orthodontist for a short period of time. But it's interesting with an orthodontist or any specialties, even though it's, it's, it's longer than let's say an oral surgeon, but they still don't have the same relationship. They have the relationship with you. Many years ago, before I started doing implant dentistry, before I, took, before I, I did continue education in implant dentistry, a patient said to me, I'm not gonna go to anybody else. You learn how to do it, Dr. Gross. And she was my impetus to moving me along in the implant dentistry realm. So we have to expand our knowledge to work on these procedures. This, this is just a sampling of it today, this short webinar. Obviously, continuing education is crucial. And today, it's very easy to do continuing education, either live or after we've gone through a year of COVID, we end up 
can do it through some type of Zoom feature or, or some type of medium like that. And the last thing is learning to market yourself. You have to market yourself to your staff. You have to market yourself to your patients. Your patients have to see that you're confident on your procedure and you know what you're doing. And the last thing is, and we forget this today, is learn how to talk to your patients about your skills. It's great to show them an intraoral camera. It's great to show them a scan, but nothing takes the place of sitting down one-to-one, -one, talking to the patient and say, I have this procedure for you. I think it's appropriate for you. We have a relationship and I'd like to do it for you. So which patient doesn't want straighter teeth? The one you never talk to. It's really that simple. Once you start talking to patients about crooked teeth, and there's various aspects to talk to them. And usually we talk to them at one of their, at one of their um, maintenance visits, a recall visit. And we do it at that time as opposed to an initial visit because when a patient comes in for an initial visit, unless they just want a general, a general exam, many times they're focused on one issue. And if you start getting sidetracked and talk to patients about other issues, they're not gonna listen to you. They're coming in because they have an incisal chip on number nine, even though it's minor, even though it is not a big deal and it's not gonna make a major difference, but that's what they're focused on. Once you deal with their chief complaint, then they're able to listen to, listen to you. So if you don't talk to these patients, once you have their confidence level, you're gonna miss many, many opportunities. And we can talk to a patient about crooked teeth or malaligned teeth from a cosmetic standpoint, but most of the time I start from a health standpoint. And the reason I start with a health standpoint is the patients for the most part are living with their crooked teeth. Sometimes the, the, the malocclusion or the malalignment is small, sometimes it's great, but they don't think twice about it or they don't think that they are a candidate for braces because they don't want to go for braces. Invisalign is something they've heard a little bit about or any type of clear line of therapy. I mentioned the word Invisalign because they are inundated with commercials about Invisalign. Just like clear choice has made a difference in implant therapy, the word Invisalign became synonymous, synonymous with a line of therapy. So patients don't think they are candidates for it or it's not important to them. Once you start talking about decay, prevention of decay or difficulty in restoring a tooth that is crooked, uh, either with, either with a, an operative procedure or even if you have to do a crown procedure. And I tell patients that if I have to do a crown on this tooth at some point, I'm gonna have to crown two teeth or I'm gonna have to take out a tooth. You start giving them another reason besides cosmetics. And once you're talking about crowded teeth and the ability to restore, crowded teeth and periodontal health, then the cosmetics comes as an afterthought they see the cosmetics aspect of it and they, they start appreciating the cosmetic point of it. So let's talk about facts. Most of the cases that I would recommend starting with, one category is crowding of the lower anterior teeth. And the amount of incisor crowding is quite high. I actually think this number is even higher than this because if you think through your patients that you're seeing, you saw this morning or you're seeing after this webinar, think how many of them have crowded lower anterior teeth. And sometimes as the patients get older, we show more of the, those lower teeth. We're doing more and more aligner cases on patients who have crowded teeth who are older than younger. We have a tendency to see more of the lower anterior teeth as we get older. So we point that out to patients at their preventative maintenance uh, visits. And this is an opportunity that, that goes on on a daily basis in my practice, and I'm sure in yours. This study came out of the uh, Department of Orthodontics at the University of North Carolina. This is a recent study on the this, this, this statistics. The, if you look at the systems on the right of the screen, you will see many, many systems out there that apply or that use aligner therapy. Some of these systems, I don't even know, I don't even know who they are. Uh, some companies come, some companies go, but it's crucial to know that there are many ways to skin a cat. Right now, clear aligner therapy is offered 
in over 45 countries. This is not something just new. This has been around, it's coming close to 20 years that clear line of therapy has been on the market. And as I mentioned before, one of the biggest, one of the biggest um, marketers, first of all, is Invisalign. And the second all now is Smile Direct. And Smile Direct is being marketed directly to consumers. And the consumers see this all the time. It's very appealing. It is very appealing to them. They take their own impression or they go someplace for a scan to be done. And then they go ahead and have unmonitored orthodontic therapy. Now I know there is a orthodontist or maybe even a general dentist, I believe it's an orthodontist overviewing the case, but that's not the point. Things change in treatment. We all know the things that change in treatment. And with enough people getting um, for lack of, of, of a better word, not the results they were expecting, doing their own type of orthodontics. This is driving patients to our practices, which is actually what we thought was going to be a disaster, or many orthodontists thought was going to be a disaster, is actually become a boom to the orthodontic industry. So I said, just like Invisalign has marketed implants, Smile Direct is marketing, is marketing clear aligner therapy for you. Now, with all that amount of crowded lower anterior teeth, only 38% of dentists in the United States are offering clear aligner therapy. They're not referring the patients out to an orthodontist. They're just not doing that. What they are doing is simply not addressing the problem, not addressing the issue. So there's a tremendous opportunity for you, all of you listening to this webinar, to make yourself a little bit unique and now you have a new service to offer your patients that you will find will start growing exponentially when people hear that you are doing clear aligned therapy. And whether you do this, whether you market this with social media, whether you market this with word of mouth, whether you market it with radio or TV ads or any other type of medium that's out there, we are so, so in tune today to marketing that the best advocate for your own office is yourself. So the global clear aligner market was 2.4, over 2.4 billion in 2020. That is a tremendous amount of dentistry being done. And think about it. What are the procedures that we do that doesn't involve poking, sticking, drilling, cutting, drugging? Those are all negatives. They're all just negatives. When you do orthodontic therapy like this, which allows the patient to take the aligners in and out, which promotes oral hygiene. And that's why most of my patients prefer aligner therapy. And I direct them in that way because it's very, very difficult to keep teeth and gingiva and the periodontium clean under braces. So clear aligners, the appeal to patients is absolutely, is absolutely obvious to them. And consequently, they, they, go to this type, they go to this type of procedure quicker than they'll go to braces. Braces are not going to go away and braces take out of the picture patient compliance. And we'll talk about patient compliance in a few moments, but once you can trust the patient to comply and wear their aligners, then the procedures really become quite easy. This is a projection again from Fortune Business Insights at the at the business potential in aligner therapy. It's only gonna get better. And in our age of cosmetic driven dentistry, the projection of doubling or tripling the present amount of aligner therapy is really mind boggling. 